Hello, today we're going to talk about shortwave listening with the ICOM IC-R75. We're only going to talk about shortwave listening, so if you use the radio for other things you probably won't find this interesting. Um, I love to DX and, and uh, with shortwave radios, and uh, I'm a news junkie, so I don't just have them as a hobby, I have them as a tool. So. Um, I'm using an LNR Precision EF shortwave listening NFED antenna. It's a sloper from about 20 feet down to 6 feet. Um, going from southeast to, well, let's see, northeast to southwest. Um, and what we're going to talk about today is exalted carrier selectable sideband listening which is called ECSS. Um, the principle of this is the opposite of what you're used to. Um, if you had a 350 horsepower engine, you don't drive around with your foot to the, to the floor of the gas pedal going 150 miles an hour. And just because you have a really sensitive radio doesn't mean you have to have your RF gain all the way up. Um, it uh, is in fact ECSS is the opposite um, of that in that less is more and you want it because when you enhance the RF gain you also enhance the, the background noise so you want to find that place with as little um, sensitivity as possible where you can separate the signal from the background noise so having said that um, we are tuned to 11.755, which uh, is maybe Sri Lanka. It could also be Brazil. Uh, this is, I looked up on short-wave.info. It's a wonderful website for information. Um, so you might, if you are not familiar with that, give it a shot because it's a wonderful, wonderful place. I use it every day. It's short-wave.info. I also want to point out that before we get into ECSS, you need to um, download Phil's R75 cookbook. It's free and it, it walks you through all the presettings that you want to set this radio to um, so that the functions we're going to use uh, work best. So right now we are tuned to a station and I have it set in the normal, absolute normal mode, AM, AGC is on, and we're going to turn up the volume. I also want to point out one of the criticisms of this radio is the tiny speaker, and I'm using this um, Sony uh, home stereo system speaker. I got it at a thrift store for five bucks. It's an 8 ohm speaker, works beautiful. It's as, almost as big as the radio. So, um, having said that, we're going to turn up the volume. And we're going to take a listen to what we hear. And now I'm going to walk you through some of the settings we're going to use. One of them is the AGC. When you're using ECSS, you want the AGC off. And you can turn it off and on by holding down the button. Oh, it won't go off of this. Okay, well, when we go to single sideband, it will. So, ECSS. Um, you notice AGC is off. I usually turn, up, turn my volume and my RF all the way down when I do this, and then I slowly bring it up. So, um, one of the techniques for ECSS is to turn your RF all the way down and turn your volume all the way up and then just bring up your RF gain until you have a volume you like. I use my RF gain for volume control a lot. Um, 
Now, there are, if you, what we're really interested in are finding weak signals, and we're, we're just going to use this signal to walk you through all the different ways you can tune this radio. Um, the point is not to make this particular signal better, but to show you all the techniques you can use so when you find a different signal, one of these techniques will be the optimum setting uh, for listening on that particular frequency. So I'm going to turn this down just a little bit because this button right here is your preamp button. I want to listen to the volume as I go from the preamp off to preamp 1 to preamp 2. I usually use it on preamp 1, sometimes preamp 2, maybe 50-50. Um, the other thing that you can try if you're having the signal's not pleasing to your ear is to push the single sideband button and go to lower sideband. Sometimes it's better listening on lower sideband. But you always want to have AGC off. Now, if you're listening to uh, single sideband transmissions on the ham bands, you want to have AGC on, um, even though you're on upper and lower sideband. But for ECSS, you want to have AGC off. So I find upper sideband usually more pleasing. So um, we're going to go back to upper sideband. And for this signal, I'm going to go to back to preamp one. Now, the other setting, let me turn these, everything down. Um, the other setting that you use um, is a little bit similar, but a little bit different. Now, when you're in e ECSS, your S meter is no longer an S meter. So that never bothers me because I don't care what the S meter says. I care what I can hear. So um, it's all about function and not about what I can see. So. The other technique that I use a lot is you turn your RF gain up and you'll notice as you turn it up, it really doesn't really do much till you get to 9, uh, on about 9 o'clock on the dial. But now you notice as I turn it up, the scale is moving to the, to the left. And what you want to do is set it somewhere between 9 and 20. Okay, And then you bring your volume up. And sometimes this separates the noise from the background. And then I kind of fine tune, just, just have to play with it and try to find a place, that little null, where you can separate the noise from the signal. There have been times when on AM I, could, I knew, like one time BBC, I knew it was there, I couldn't hear it for the noise. But when I went to ECSS, I could pull out a signal that was understandable. So, um, in fact, I never use AM for single sideband listening anymore. I always use uh, upper sideband or sometimes lower, but usually upper sideband. So, that's the, that's the other technique is, again, I'll do that again, just to show you, turn everything down, and then increase your RF to your meter is around, it's going to be 9 and 20. And then adjust your volume. Again, more is less. More is less. Now, another uh, wonderful thing this radio has is the DSP unit, which is turned on here. And you see the noise reduction thing comes up. Now, there's a lot of criticism on EHAM uh, reviews about the, the DSP unit in this radio. I think it works beautifully, and it's, it's, it's tunable also. So, when you're in uh, the noise reduction or DSP, just hold down the button, and now you see you have your adjustable uh, settings for DSP. It's set at 4 where I usually do it. That's where I keep it set. But it goes from 0 to 15.
So that's another technique you can use and just push your NR button and you're back to your regular scale. Um, and I use the DSP unit probably 40% of the time, 30-40% of the time. It doesn't always work with a particular signal. One day it'll work, another day you won't need it or it won't be effective. Uh, when it works it's wonderful. Um, there's so many different problems with signals that have to travel so far that one day a technique works, another day another technique works. So that's why there's so many choices with this radio. Another thing that you can do um, is extreme fine tuning, especially if you have a signal adjacent that's bothersome. This is your, the TS is your tuning speed and you notice the triangle is over the 5, which means when you turn it, that number is going to move. If you push it once, now you're going to fast tuning, this number will move. You push it again and you have no number, I mean no triangle. Now you push and hold down the TS button and you see that little zero appears there and it's now extreme fine tuning so you can just barely barely tune to sometimes tune out something that's bothersome to you uh, it's an adjacent. I don't use this very often but I want you to know it's there because there'll be a time when you'll, you'll want to use it. So then you push it again and now your triangle's back on the five. Very easy to get back to. Um, another thing that I use, let me just turn off the noise reduction here. Go to preamp two. We're going to talk about the uh, passband filters. The, the large knob, the outer one, is the nine kilohertz filter. The inner small one is the 455 filter. Um, I use them for volume control. So, if you turn it, this, and I use the 455, I hardly ever use the 9 kilohertz, but I use the 455 all the time. So, if you turn it to the right, you, you see you have a more bassy tone. I turn it back. And then you turn it to the left. Right, start talking again, sir. We'll wait till he starts talking here. If he ever does. And then I'll turn it to the right and you'll just, there we go. And you see it's no treble. You just need to go a little ways, you don't need to go very far. But you play with that and see for yourself. Now, another great thing about ECCS, I mean ECSS, is that when you tune, cruising around looking for um, a station to listen to, um, it sets out a tone when you get next to the frequency, so it's you can't miss <laughs> finding a frequency. So, um, and again, I want to I want to point out here that I I, I I keep my RF at nine or low, you know, to begin with, because this there's a little bit of danger involved in this because it can emit a really loud tone. Uh, so you and if you have headphones on, it can really blast you and hurt your ears. So usually I I'm cruising I I don't have headphones on and then when I find a signal I want to hone in on then I put the headphones on and make my adjustments um, but you don't you really want to be careful about blasting your ears so uh, I'm going to show you how that tone works here I'm going to turn the volume up <coughs> and just keep it kind of low just a little bit above mine <coughs> excuse me now I'm going to just tune down one and you hear that frequency so, as you see how 
when you're tuning up, before you get to the frequency, you hear that sound. Now, if you're in lower sideband, it's on the other side. So when I'm tuning and the numbers are getting bigger, I have it on upper sideband. If I'm tuning and the numbers are getting lower, I keep it on lower sideband. That way, as I'm coming up to a station, I hear the tone and I know something's there. But again, I must caution you, be careful, because if you have a weak station and you had the RF turned up and then you find a strong station, it'll blast you. So, um, that is... Let me see if I can see. If we can find another station here. Let's just cruise a little. See if we can find something interesting. It's during the day, so there's not a lot of... And see, like right there, you hear that tone? There's a signal there. Of some kind, but you can't quite pull it out. If you were on AM and cruising, you'd never even hear it. So you find really weak stations. Um, with this technique. See, as, as you come up to the station, there's the tone, and there's the... And then, we'll just play with this one for a minute. So, we're going to turn the volume all the way up. And then we're going to turn it off again. The other technique is turn the RF all the way down, turn the volume all the way down. Now adjust the RF to it's at between 9 and 10, 9 and 20. Increase the volume. See, that's a little nicer. We don't even have the DSP on. So that's how it works. And just as closing, I'm going to let you hear what this uh, for my own curiosity as well as yours. We're going to go back to AM and just hear what the signal sounds like if you have it a normal listening mode. And it might be fine, but for some stations, all, the, all of these other settings um, will be very helpful to you. I hope this video is helpful and uh, I wish you many hours of wonderful. Uh, cruising and DXing on the shortwave bands. Thank you very much.